Try to clean it. Try to. All right, guys. So as you can see, Chris is diving straight into it, and uh, what we're doing today is a front mount intercooler kit. So, um, well, it's actually not really a kit. We're just making one up. This is an eBay special RX7 front mount intercooler. Now, um, this isn't my idea. This is actually something I've seen on one of the forums, but. Uh, it's a 2.5 inch outlet on each side. We need that because the outlets are facing the bottom of the car and uh, where we're putting it in here, we need the pipes to go down. Um, so that's cool. And the other thing that we've ordered up is a 2.5 inch uh, pipe kit and silicone joiner kit. And it also comes with these T-bolt clamps. So they're uh, gonna be strong enough. And I did have to go and buy a 2.5 to two inch reducer. And that is for the hot side I believe it reduces down so we're going to be using um, we're going to be using some of the factory piping that's already there and I don't exactly know how it's going to be done yet but we do need to get the cooler as far back as possible because I am planning on running a winch so all this stuff needs to get shifted back in behind um, all these pipes and we obviously need to make sure it clears this bonnet latch here so We've got a bit of um, thinking to do before we dive into it, but um, it shouldn't be too hard. I'm sure we can work it out. It shouldn't be too hard. I'm sure we can work it out. One of the Corona bats has taken a Vegemite poo on my windscreen, so we'll have to get that off before we do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so happy that he that he landed that on the glass and not on the paint, because that's a, that's a bloody paint peeler, that one. All right, so we're just going to get stuck into it. Um, film the adventure as we go, and uh, yeah, Looking forward to having this kit done because front mounts look sick. Um, I did think about painting it black too, but I think we're just going to leave it alloy for now, eh? And, uh... Chromies. Chromies. <laughs> Should look sweet. Bash pipe. All right guys, so as you can see here, that is our standard intercooler that is, um, it's actually full of mud. Like, I don't know if you guys can see that, but I really try and rinse this thing out and they're just in the shittest location. Like that, it's just dumb to have it down here behind the bash plate. Cause what happens is when you're full driving, hit some mud, goes through there, straight into the cooler. And then um, you stop getting that cooling power. Also we've got plastic end tanks, which I'm not really a fan of, but um, that's no biggie. So what I'm going to do is just try and get this cooler out now. I'm just struggling to try to get these uh, stock clamps off at the moment. Yeah, they're being a bit of a nuisance. Got this. I just can't even see like what you press or what you push or. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we figured this out. You got a prize on these. <laughs> Only uh, a couple minutes later, yeah, for sure. Um, we just prize this up, and then you got to prize the other side, and you got to get that that clip out there, and then she just lifts off. There's a fair bit of oil around this, but that's just from not having a catch can, um, which I probably should get. And uh, this cooler's almost out. Chris has just got that side. Oh, yeah. oh it sounds. <laughs> Alright, so that's the pissy little intercooler that we're getting rid of. Done and dusted. I don't think we're going to have to take the bull bar off, eh? No. There's heaps of room. I don't know what people's been talking about. Alright, so now that we've got the uh, old intercooler out, it's time to start moving all the stuff where we're going to actually put the new intercooler in. So, I don't even know what the hell these things are, but um, they've got to move, whatever they are. Um, this bracket for that comes with Iron Man bull bar for the grill to pop into, uh, that'll have to go. And these brackets down here will have to go because we've got the uh, winch cradle here. I kind of want the intercooler, I don't think it's going to be possible to be honest, as far back as possible. Um, so, if I do get a winch, I can still put it in. Check it, check the shirts, check the shirts, check the shirts. Check the shirts. <laughs> making some pretty good progress here so what we've done shifted that behind so the this was actually on the outside so uh, still use the same bolt and then just put a nut on the back gonna do the same for these lines here and the uh, horn there might be able to just actually flip that sit you know still leave it on the outside and flip that as long yeah. as those wires are long enough so that'll be easy um, but yeah just trying to get it as flat as possible so 
The next step is probably going to be to unclip these from these holders and then we're going to have to modify these holders so that we can um, pop them back. Bada bing, bada boom. Like that. Oi, that's it. That's what we want. Nice and so that one's out. I just got to get rid of that wire that's hanging on there and then we can put that behind the bracket. I mean, we do have to take these brackets off. And... All right, so I've just also found something as well. Oh, I'd seen it before, but I wasn't too worried. That yellow plug there is for a airbag sensor. So if I was to hit that pretty hard. Kaboom. Kaboom. And that, that means it's um, borderline right off too if the airbags go off, isn't it? Yeah, in car wheel, yeah. Yeah, it can be, eh? Yeah, so what we're going to do is just disconnect the battery. Um, and normally they, I think they do hold a little bit of charge, eh? So yeah, if the battery yeah. dies, it can still go off. So yeah. hopefully by the time, if we do knock that, we have no battery for the airbags to deploy. That's our theory. So disclaimer, if you're doing this, disconnect your battery first. And ensure you do the right turn all the right way around first time. Everything is being pushed back and removed, which is really nice. Yeah, so we managed to get all that back. So all this AC line here was actually like protruding out probably 20 mil or something like that so especially that horn that just flipped around those two brackets we did have to find two nuts for the back of that um little cooler thing there but everything is pushed back like 100 percent. it's just pushed back so much so better much compared to what it was but like we're talking we probably just gained you know 10 centimeters 100 mil something like that that's what we've gained in room which is like amazing amazing but what we're going to do is cut there cut there cut there cut there fold that back that's going to push that up um, we might need to just slice on the inside of there so we can also bend the top tab up a little bit and then we're going to paint it so it doesn't rust um, and then yeah like i said that's going to allow us to actually push these back further enough for us to get this cooler in and i think we're getting pretty close to actually starting to fit it up um, so i'm getting pretty excited i don't know if chris is but i am mm. All right, so at the moment, what we've done is just um, protected the fins on that because we don't like the look of bent fins. And we're just trying to suss out... Rookie! We're just trying to suss out exactly where the cooler's gonna go. So we obviously need to make brackets top and bottom to support that. And we just gotta be careful of stuff that moves like that, the back of that latch and all that sort of stuff. But um, firstly, what we're gonna have to do is you just see me cut these up. And um, what we've done is just trim the sides off of them. And firstly, we're gonna have to put them on with the air con, whatever the f uh, on there i mean i shouldn't say that <laughs> i'm trying not to swear the only color we have was gray um so what we're going to do is quickly um bolt these in get those uh little things the aircon things mounted up and that way we can uh, figure out exactly where our cooler is going to go and we might be able to reuse a bolt or weld a tab on somewhere or you know we just got to keep trying to figure it out so that's how we've decided to bend it so before it went up like that and then flat so now we've gone up back and then we're, we're going to try and keep that level so this is just a test fit see how we're going that's it though that's it so that's what we were saying before where we want to chop the sides off and bend them in so that's worked out a treat um, nothing like we've zip tied everything up so nothing's actually protruding if we look down the front now it's actually flat whereas if before it was out to there so gain heaps of room so now it's time to um, test fit the cooler up and figure out a way how we're going to mount it we might have to use like some of this bolt here and um, just extend a plate out or something like that just a 90 i want to use all aluminium we've got some aluminium scrap here so um, we don't get any rusting issues but it's all looking pretty good so oh, ho, ho. So it's gonna look sick gonna apparently look sick. um helps boost as well mm. and um it won't clog up in the mud mint mint Damn, shorty! Damn! Damn! Cut down, look at that thing, boy! That looks sick. Looks gangster, eh? One eternity later. Alright, guys, so the uh, GoPro actually died, so it's a little bit later on. Um, it's dark outside. And what we've actually managed to do is get the cooler fully mounted, so it's solid as. God, feel how solid that actually is. Oh, that's not even. <laughs> that's mint. That's mint. So we haven't used any rubber, um, and I'm hoping like the slack takes up in the coupling. But um, yeah, so you can see these little brackets we've made here. Just tech screwed them in and bolted them at the top. And through here, um, we've just put a big aluminium angle across the bottom. And um, from two standard brackets there, we've made like two 90s come up and 
Um, I don't know if I can get under there to show. Yeah, so that's the brackets we've made there and they just come off factory bolts. And um, now all we have to do is connect there to either there, because that's got an O-ring seal in it, so I don't know about doing it to that pipe. Um, or we can go right up to the top. We're just going to suss that out now. So currently we've just been playing around with the pipes for the intercooler. Um, just trying to dummy play or dummy fit at the moment. As Tom is about to cut another piece for the cold side, correct? Yeah. Yeah, it's been a bit of a prick because they've got these um, clip ends. We're just sort of making it all work. And uh, we don't actually have a bead roller either, so we won't be able to roll this bead around here. So what we're doing is just cutting everything. I'm going to clean it all out, um, and then I'll have to get it done at a later date. I'll just, I'll just pull it all off. Won't be able to hit like a high boost now, because it'll probably just pop a coupler off. But we will spray it with like a grippy stuff. Grippy um, spray, spray stuff. Hair, hair, um, hair spray. Oh, we or... have been here. What time is it? It's 18 past 7, and I've been here since 1. So, I mean... Both of us? Yeah, both what was it? of us. <laughs> I was here two minutes after you, really. Alright, so it's really hard to see, but the inner cooler's in there. You'll really see that at daytime when the um, light's shining perfectly through it. But under here, what we've done is we've got that pipe going right up. This pipe here going right up to the other side. Inner cooler all nicely mounted under there. Alright guys, so it's actually two days later, believe it or not. And on Saturday night, um, we hit a pretty big snag. I couldn't actually get the last piece, which was um, just the, uh, the hot side to connect to the hot pipe. Um, now that's basically because of these fittings that we did show earlier on in the video. They're just like a clip lock fitting and Because um, that had that on it, and it's a two inch pipe I couldn't actually fit the coupler over and clamp it. It just kept bloody blowing off. So that was no good um, Sort of tried to suss out trying to buy one of these with a the barb on couldn't find it um, The only option that I had was to actually cut the pipe so the hose comes down like that and what I've done is I've cut it and we've got a piece of two inch pipe with two bead rolls on the end shoved up it and two t-bolt clamps so um, i'm thinking that that is going to work now we are going to try it out in a bit the cold side is pretty much done um, and we're just about to test i've got the, the cooler all mounted up everything's tight except for the last piece which is just these bits here um, now when we're finished with this i'm going to have to take it to an alley guy and get them to put a bead roll around each end uh, and that's just going to stop them from blowing off like Pretty much not going to be able to hit a high boost until we get that sorted. But it's getting very close now. This thing has been an absolute pain in the bum because I just couldn't get that fitting. So we're almost done now. This is the last piece of the puzzle. So I'm going to quickly chuck this on and we can go for a test drive. All right, so this is what I'm talking about here. This is actually the hot side of the inner cooler. So if we follow that down, I've just got one last 90 to put in and clamp it. But this is our monstrosity over here. Um, that is the standard hose that comes on it. I've sliced that with a knife. We've got our two inch piece of pipe with two bead rolls on each end. We've got a two inch to 2.5 inch coupler. And the last piece is that 90 that I showed you and then two T-bolt clamps. But over on this side, this is the uh, cold side here. So the air goes through the inner cooler over to this side. And um, as you can see, we've got a nice 45 coming out, a nice 90, and then another 90 bend up into the fitting up there. So I'm pretty happy with this side. We, we only have a couple um, bead rolls, there's one there. That one's missing one and that one's missing one so um, there is a pretty good chance that some of this is going to blow off but um, I have sprayed some uh, some belt grip spray on it to help it grip on and these t-bolts are really nice and tight so uh, not going to hit any high boost um, tonight I'm just going to try and get all this sorted and then we're going to get all that welded up properly um, we've got the L brackets there piece of alley across two bolts into the bottom of the inner cooler with a rubber cushion on top. So we did use the factory rubber cushion just in case the engine gets a bit of movement. The, these can actually flex instead of the couplers flexing. So I'm really liking the look of it so far. It looks sick, um, even though it's a bit of a headache to do. This is the last piece of the puzzle. Going to pop that in, then we can start it up, um, take it for a test drive. Actually, I'll probably put the air box and all that back in, take it for a test drive. Hopefully nothing blows off and um, then we're sweet.
All right, so um, the test drive was unsuccessful at about 25 PSI, a cup of blue. I don't know which one yet. Where are we looking here? So that one didn't go. Oh, there's the culprit, look at that. That's actually good. That's a good spot for it to blow. So once I get all those pipes bead rolled, um, I don't think we're gonna have any issues, but that's gonna be at a later date. For now, I'm just gonna putt home, um, not get on the boost too hard. And uh, yeah, she's looking mint. I'm really happy with the look of it. I think it looks sick. Actually, I might quickly throw the, um, the grill back on and then we'll have a look, eh? That looks friggin' mint. So I'm gonna leave the bash plate off uh, just for now, just in case anything um, blows off. And also I need to get the pipe speed rolled. Like I've said a million times, it looks friggin' mint. I'm stoked with that. Honestly, I think I've been missing a front mount this whole time. I just always look at the front of the car and because I've got that mesh grill, you see straight through it into the little water pipes and all that, and it just looks gross. So I'm so stoked with that. It looks sick. It's gonna hide everything in there. It's also getting that cooler um, up out of the dirt. The old one's actually on the back of it full of shit. So that's gonna help a lot. Engine bay is looking pretty tired, actually. I, I really wanna upgrade that hot pipe. I wanna do a airbox and I wanna do a catch can. Um, so they're gonna be some things that I'm gonna do next. But for now, that is bloody it. So thank you all so much for watching. If you've made it this far, you're an absolute legend. Um, sorry I didn't film a ridiculous amount with this, but hopefully this helps someone um, do their front mount if they wanna do it. It's bloody hard, but obviously you can learn from my mistakes and do it a lot quicker. So thank you guys for watching. There is a shop coming soon with some t-shirts and hoodies and some stickers. So. If you'd like to support the channel, you can do it through that shop. Um, it'll be on my Instagram. I'll post a link or something like that. So thank you all so much for watching, and I'll catch you next time.